let's start with the running backs. David Montgomery Ooh. is being drafted at 402. Tariq Cohen's Ooh, stop. <laughs> Tariq Cohen's stop. being drafted at 512. 512. I want to bring up Tariq Cohen because a lot of time and effort and energy has been given to looking at David opportunity. opportunity and and the chance he has in this offense. So I want to talk about Tariq Cohen. I tweeted something the other day. He was number one in football in yards uh, from scrimmage per touch, 6.9, yes. ahead of everybody else. Uh, very dynamic player. Um, had a good fantasy football week, 63% of the time. From weeks four through 13, he was the RB12 in football. I'm just curious where you're at with Tariq Cohen because, you know, he's a great player. I don't know if he could have done right. anything more with the opportunity he had last year. So I don't see any reason why the team doesn't want to utilize him in the same fashion, and that equated to a very nice finish. I have him at RB21. Mike, you've got him all the way down at 31. Jason, you're splitting the difference here at RB26. So here's the here's my concern for Tariq Cohen. Uh, number one, regression is just it's coming for Tariq Cohen naturally, even if they utilize him the same way. Since the year 2000, there are only eight instances where a running back has had 70 or more receptions and cleared 10 yards per reception. So what he did last year in the passing game was actually on a historic level, and that's where he gets his entire value. Now, if you look back the first three games when the, the Chicago Bears were trying their best to, to turn Jordan Howard into a three-down skill set running back where they actually gave him some targets, in those first three weeks, here's Tariq Cohen's passing line or receiving line. 2.7 targets per game, 16 receiving yards per game. Yeah, he, it was all Howard. It was all Howard all the time. And that's my concern for Cohen is that they paid up for David Montgomery because he has the, the three-down skill set. Tariq Cohen was still – he's still going to play. He's, he's an excellent player. He's great for this offense. But if he turns if, – if a lot of that passing work or even – part of that passing work gets transferred over to David Montgomery, then I think people are going to be very disappointed that they spent the fifth round pick on, on Tariq Cohen. He won't be nearly as consistent as, as he was last year. What? That's, Go that, ahead. that's the take that I'm on as well. I, I worry about Tariq Cohen because I do believe they want a back in Matt Nagy's system that can be a three down back. You they, they showed it and then they paid up heavily in the draft to get their guy so I, I, I worry that Tariq Cohen's going away. However, one thing that's worth bringing up a little bit, I know the Bears' defense, they're, they're very good, but some of what they did from a turnover margin, things like that, they're not sustainable from last year. You lose Vic Fangio as a defensive coordinator and you replace him with Chuck Pagano, who is a defensive mind Sure. That I, never had good defensive teams. Yeah, I, I don't have any concerns about this no, my, defense. My point is yeah. just they won. A, I mean, they were a 12 win team. They yes. were in game, you know, winning game scripts. They didn't so want to lose. They often. didn't want to lose Vic Fangio. <laughs> and, and so my point is if maybe, you know, they are in more losing situations, that bodes well for Tariq Cohen Can, in that sense. But for the most part, I if you're asking, would I rather have. At the high price of an early fourth round, David Montgomery, or uh, the cheaper price of almost the sixth round for Tariq Cohen, I'm still going my opportunity. And, I, and I'll, I'll go the other direction. I think Cohen's the better value in that situation. And, Mike, a couple counterpoints just to bring up to kind of sure. help people make their decisions about the backfield. One, Jordan Howard was not a slouch in terms of offensive snaps and participation in this offense. You already had an right. offense last year where he had 250 carries. In fact, his 3,370 yards is in the top five over the last three years. He's just been – it's crazy when you let a guy go that's been that effective on the ground. Obviously, it's about a fit for this team. He had 20 receptions last year. So, yes, does David Montgomery maybe eat in – does he catch 30, 35 Not passes in more. his rookie season? They brought in Mike Davis, who was on the field for over 100, yes, and 120 well. touches last year in Seattle. The reason they bring in these guys and they, they move on from a Howard is for fit, obviously. Right. It's not just production on the ground. It's for fit. The Bears were one of the least efficient teams 
when they ran multiple back sets. And that's something they want to do in that kind of an option shotgun offense. They want multiple backs on the field. So when Tariq Cohen is, is highly effective and he's going to still be on the field in multiple back sets, and Jordan Howard did have a huge touch count. I mean, 270 touches is a lot. Those would be kind of some of the reasons I believe Tariq Cohen will continue doing what he's doing and and give you better value than maybe. Sure. And and let's say the first, you think Montgomery, is he going to be that guy the first four weeks of the season? Maybe there's huge opportunity for somebody to get max value out of Tariq Cohen over the first four to six weeks as Montgomery acclimates to this system. That That's some of the things that I'm thinking about as a as I contemplate drafting a bear. It, sure. It's definitely worth bringing up. I do believe Montgomery comes out as a near workhorse from week one. And Tariq Cohen went from 6.7 yards per reception to 10.2. I mean, that's that's a massive, massive jump, and <clears throat> maybe he's somewhere in between those two. Maybe it's not as bad as 6.7, but you're going to need him to be an incredibly efficient receiver out of the backfield. And I have my last point here. As if you look at Pro Football Reference, they they in fact give you the nicknames of these players, and there's been an addition to Tariq Cohen. And oh, it, no, on. no, it is not Jason's <sighs> abomination. It's of not the dinosaur hunter, but it actually well, Jason's might be better because he's been called the human joystick before. I've heard that one, but there's a new one. So let me see if this affects your fantasy rankings or not. Chicken salad, chicken salad. What? Exactly. <laughs> He's on Pro Football Reference. That's his nickname. Listed what? as the human joystick. Do you guys like chicken, chicken salad? No. It's, Turok the dinosaur it's hunter terrible. sounding pretty good right about now. Yes. <laughs> and no, chicken salad is terrible. Chicken yeah. on a salad's fine. Chicken salad is like, why not? Why chicken did you salad give me a tuna, or tuna salad? salad? Tuna salad. Tuna salad. Too many variables for both of those situations. <laughs> I worry about the mayonnaise situation in all. Like salads brought yeah, to a like potluck there's, situation. Like there's not enough? What? Not enough? More mayonnaise. People don't keep track of the expiration on their mayonnaise very closely. Oh, if, if it's an outdoor picnic, no, I'm not taking, Get, that. I mean, no, I'm not taking the risk. That's the quickest way to, to the, the, the ER. restroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> All right. in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Hey, want to have a cup of coffee with me? Click subscribe. We'll hang out. We'll do it together. Make your team the best.